Like I talk negatively to myself, waking up feeling like oh, I'm feeling worthless or I, I think I'm not good enough. Those are some of the potential signs of unhealthy uh, relationship with yourself. You know when you mention the avoidance part, uh, that is me. <laughs> they always have this saying that you tend to marry your parents. Some of you like your parents, right? <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of efforts to actually understand yourself a lot. You learn to build relationship. You want to build a healthy relationship with people, right? Yeah. You must be intentional to learn to build a healthy relationship with yourself. Welcome to Tea Breaks with Therapists, where we brew conversations on mental health one sip at a time. I'm your host, Chia Yan, and in this unique series, we aim to break the stigma surrounding mental health by engaging in bite-sized, insightful interviews with experienced mental health practitioners. So grab your favorite beverage, get cozy, and let's dive into the fascinating world of psychology one tea break at a time. Today we have our guest speaker Jolene with us to talk about relationships with ourselves and others. Well, you see, when we navigate our day-to-day, -day, it does not only revolve around relationship with ourselves, but also with others. So before we delve deeper into this topic, Jolene, could you just introduce yourself to all of us? So I'm a therapist at Remind Psychology, and most of my clients are actually young adults. And the issues that I usually receive are work stress, anxiety, depression, or sometimes uh, marriage as well, or romantic relationships or any kind of relationships. Recently also have some clients that are uh, coming to me for trauma as well. That's about me. All right. Thank you so much, Julie, for the introduction. Well, then let's just jump right into our topic for today. Okay. What are some of the common signs that someone may have an unhealthy relationship with themselves? There are usually a lot of signs. So okay. some of the signs are like potentially like you know, you're having difficulty to cope with your daily activities mm -hmm. or you, have, you feel really low productive, stress, right. high level anxiety, depression, mm -hmm. or potentially like burnout and feeling exhausted and tired. Those are some of the physical symptoms as well. For me, one of the significant signs in my own personal experience is that when I have unhealthy relationship with myself, it's like every time I wake up, I feel low and I have a negative self-talk with myself. Like I talk negatively to myself, waking up feeling like oh, I'm feeling worthless or I, I think I'm not good enough. Those are some of the potential signs of unhealthy uh, relationship with yourself. If you want to actually evaluate further to understand your level of anxiety, stress or depression, you can actually go to the Remind website. So they have like this uh, online free mental health screening tool for you to assess <laughs> and to understand and to keep yourself in check from time to time. Yeah. I think that's very, very important as well. It's just a screening tool, but at least it tells us where we are in our mental and emotional well-being. Interesting as well, because you mentioned that hey, you also experience and notice when you have an unhealthy relationship with yourself. Yeah. And I think therapists ourselves, we are not exempted from this kind Definitely. of feelings. <laughs> yeah. How do you think that our early childhood experiences influences our self-perception, subsequently our relationship with others? I think, again, this is a very, very big question. <laughs> it's actually a very broad topic. Mm. All of us have our own coping mechanism when yeah. we're facing like different kind of stressor. Mm. And sometimes it can be helpful, and sometimes they're not so helpful. Mm. And the not so helpful kind are potentially like you fight, or you flight, mm -hmm. or you just freeze. For example, uh, some people already prefer to drink a lot. Usually some people, they like to drink a lot of alcohol is because they do have underlying issues as well. It's just that it's so hard for them to share, mm -hmm. pour it out. So instead of like having to deal with this emotional stress mm -hmm. or whatever feelings that they're dealing with, it's so difficult to express right. or to process it. So they just drink, drink it through and mm -hmm. just have fun. Like, you know, like Robin Williams, he's like the most happiest a comedian, mm, yes. right? But unfortunately, we do not know that actually he's also one of the saddest person who has actually experiences a lot of uh, mental health uh, mm -hmm. challenges as well. That's right. And the thing is that a lot of time, these coping mechanisms are kind of like uh, unconscious. Mm. It comes from the unconscious side of us. Mm. That also ties a lot back to our childhood mm. and our life experiences as a child and also as an adolescent. There's a few factors that actually will influence how you are today and your childhood experiences. I will name probably four or five of them. So one of it is an attachment. So if you have a very secure attachment style with your parents, they give you support and valid validating your needs and sending your emotional needs and everything at young age. And they take actions, nurture you, accept you, provide you the love and stability in a consistent way. And 
you will actually as grow up, you know how to establish that kind of secure relationship with people because mm. you know what's healthy, right? But if you don't, don't you have a caretakers, caretakers can be your parents, your step parents, your guardian angels, or mm. anyone who take care of you most of the time. If they are always anxious, like I mean, they are sometimes they are there, sometimes they are not there. So you potentially may develop this anxious attachment style. Yeah. So as you grow older, you may be experiencing the fear of abandonment. So the relationship that you pick or people that you're attracted to may be so unconsciously you choose that kind of people who may not be providing you that emotional need you're looking for mm-hmm. because you just feel like so familiar. You tend to choose. They always have this saying that you tend to marry your parents or someone who's like your parents, <laughs> right? It's kind of in that way. Mm. The second thing that I would say that how childhood experience will be influenced of we are today mm. and uh, relationship with uh, ourselves and others mm. is also like our self-esteem. Mm. So for example, if you have a caregiver that always criticize you or neglect you yeah. or protecting you mm. or protective, basically you have this like a freaking and mesh relationship yeah. with that person mm. with the family members that everything that you do you have to report to them inform them or something mm. potentially you may experience low self-esteem mm-hmm. you basically have a lower sense of self and you wouldn't know your boundary that much as well like you don't know what what's a healthy level right yeah. so another two things i would say that you definitely influence your communication style and how you know you communicate with people so i noticed that also mm. as i grow older i noticed like how my parents communicate there are certain things i definitely picked up from them that mm. i would say is a no go so it takes a lot of conscious efforts in your mind or you know conscious daily efforts to remind yourself to communicate better and pick a better healthier way to deal with things mm. last but not least yeah coping mechanism mm. everyone has a different way to cope even if we have the same parent that criticize us. Every child has a different kind of personality. For example, I'm more of an anxious kind of person. Right. Because it's like an inborn temperament. Mm-hmm. And you're more a calm person. Right. So if you have like a parent that criticize me as an anxious child, potentially as I grow older, I may just become passive. I'll just subjugate myself mm. and just say that I'll just be passive. I'll just like yeah. agree with everything. Yeah. But if I have a someone who is more calm mm-hmm. or someone who is more aggressive for example yeah. they will probably either they would just be that person the parent that criticizes well as mm-hmm. they grow older or they just go through the extreme opposite mm-hmm. they will not criticize at all they'll become overcompensate with a different mm-hmm. kind of a coping mechanism and behavior so it's actually a lot of factors yeah and how childhood actually influence your relationship with some others it's a big array of things mm. and sometimes uh, going through therapy or talking to a therapist is also a good way for you to find out and learn more about yourself as well. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> and I believe that's only just scratching the surface. Right? It is, it is. Yeah, so if um, I'm hearing correctly, there is attachment, there is also self-esteem, there is also communication and also coping mechanisms mm. uh, that come into play on how our early childhood experiences can influence our self-perception and also relationship with other people. Yeah. And now I'm very interested in, you know, uh, any practical steps or strategies for us to improve our own self-esteem? Well, you know, it actually takes me quite some time to understand what self-esteem mm. really means. Yeah. Because everyone has like a so, uh, the definition is so broad. Yes. I guess to me, self-esteem encompasses a few things as mm-hmm. well, like self-confidence. Yes. Confidence in the sense like, you know, how confident you are in that particular skills or your own skills to achieve certain goals. Okay. Uh, or like self-respect, you know, mm. what are your values? Okay. How do you want to treat yourself? How you want others to treat you? Mm. And are you standing and kind to yourself? Self-awareness as well. I think self-esteem encompasses all this kind of like uh, variables. Mm-hmm. So how do we improve that? I think first thing we need to know is then uh, our values. Yeah. Okay. Introspection actually helps a lot. Introspection. Uh, journaling. Those uh, activities actually helps a lot mm. to understand yourself. Of course, not everyone likes to do journaling. Yes. <laughs> so another way to understand yourself is actually through physical activity as well. Like, you know, doing yoga mm. or going to the gym, doing Muay Thai or sports. Mm. Any kind of sports that actually helps you to feel your body, to know how you react in certain situations. Mm. Uh, I think the most important thing is that you must have that strong intention, consciousness as well, like mm. you want to do it for yourself like every day and so how do you Self- improve self-compassion some of us we self-sacrifice ourselves a lot mm. i think this is very common especially you have a very uh, parenting style that is like uh, you do everything for the family so you tend to self-sacrifice yourself mm. that you forgot about yourself so i think self-compassion is about like 
instead of just giving to others, you also learn to give to mm-hmm. yourself, understand and be kind to yourself. Mm-hmm. And it can start from as little as like doing a positive self-talk to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you can do it in the, in, in the mirror. So mm-hmm. if I were to wake up every morning or most of the time, mm-hmm. like facing the mirror and say that mm-hmm. I feel really down today, like I feel so worthless today, I, mm-hmm. I didn't get to achieve to complete my task mm-hmm. that is at hand, so I feel so overwhelmed. Those thoughts happen. Mm-hmm. Um, perhaps also remind yourself consciously, or have a flashcard to remind yourself of some of the positive affirmations out to yourself. Because I think those are small little activities you can do that to become more aware of yourself to boost your self-compassion. Mm. We talk kindly to yourself is so important. And yeah. if you don't know how to do that, I guess uh, getting feedback from your loved ones, mm. or people who actually want you to succeed, uh, who are also realistic, can give you a realistic feedback to you. Alternatively, talking to a therapist may also help you as well. Yeah, and I had a conversation with someone recently they mentioned how you wouldn't allow your phone battery to die. Same thing as well, you want to ensure that hey, your mental, emotional well-being is also not to a point where it's depleting. Because yeah. right? you constantly want to charge your phone to ensure that you can navigate it. Yeah. Anywhere you need to go, you need to communicate. Same thing as well with our own health. And when yeah. it comes to you know, talking kindly to people, right? We are all our worst self critique I think it's something I like to do with my clients as well. Like I would ask them the same questions that they ask me. Like, oh, how do I do this, do this, do that? And then I, I feel so stressed. Um, you know, I am not worth anything and I'm not good to myself. And then I'll just ask them, oh, if let's say someone else just comes to you with the same problem, and just pretend I'm the one. And then I would say like, oh, you know, I, I'm good for nothing, Jolene. Um, I'm feeling very stressed out. What would you say to me? And then they would naturally say something that's very kind and very compassionate. And then I say, do you actually say that to yourself then when you experience it? And you're like, oh no, actually I don't. It's yeah. so hard. <laughs> because it's so hard to visualize it, right? Mm. And I think empathy is definitely very important. I guess one of the ways I can do that is that actually if you watch the movie called, you know, like the, the Disney movie or something, Pixar with the different characters. Like oh, is it uh, Inside Out? Inside uh, Out Emotions? Yes, <laughs> yes. I love that. So it's just like that. We all have different characters in us. Mm-hmm. Let's say that there is a child in us. Mm-hmm. They require that affirmation, right? The child yeah. is actually looking, feeling so low and all, mm-hmm. being vulnerable. Yeah. And it needs help. So actually there's also the adult you in you. So you can actually like have that healthy adult of side of you Mm -hmm. to talk to yourself to the vulnerable child in you give that information if you can imagine that i guess that's so one on way you can do it instead of just writing and Mm. talking imagery actually like imagine it in your head actually helps too i mean not everyone speaks the same language so instead of talking you can just imagine your adult self your current self is giving your this little child Mm. a hug because a lot of all this time you felt that way especially if that is a trail of uh, patterns mm. since young or for yeah. many, many times. It's also because of your childhood experiences. Mm. You never get that validation when you're young. Yeah. Your core in your emotional need as a child, you mm. don't get it. I don't know if you've heard of this uh, psychologist called Jeffrey Young. He's actually quite a famous uh, therapist uh, mm. that focuses a lot on schema therapy. So I love that he was talking about like, you know, every child, every one of us, we have these five core emotional needs. Mm. And one of his is actually definitely a secure attachment to yeah. others, mm-hmm. including to ourselves, like, you know, what we actually want is to have safety, mm-hmm. stability, naturalness, acceptance, right? Mm-hmm. And of course, as a child, and as we grow older, we definitely want this uh, sense of autonomy, being competent, mm-hmm. and understand our sense of self. We also want to learn to be spontaneous mm-hmm. and play. Having this uh, freedom to express the valid needs and emotions, mm-hmm. and also learning to have uh, realistic limits and some control. Mm-hmm. But if these core emotional needs are not met. Sometimes it became a unhealthy coping mechanism. Dealing that issues at the time that you're facing with yeah. your child, you probably would draw it back to you growing as an adult. Mm. And then you're still doing the same habit again. It takes a lot of efforts to actually extend yourself a lot. You learn to build relationship. You want mm. to build a healthy relationship with people, right? Yeah. You must be intentional to learn to build a healthy relationship with yourself. Wow, that's so powerful. And then how then can setting healthy boundaries in our relationships contribute to a better sense of self and stronger connections with others. Once you actually have draw this uh, intentional self-introspection, mm. self-awareness, work on yourself mm-hmm. and, and building a healthy relationship with yourself, right? Yeah. Once you're able to do that, you also learn how to draw healthy boundaries right. because you understand what respect means to mm-hmm. you in your own world. Because everyone has different definition of respect. Mm-hmm. Everyone has a different definition of what is a healthy uh, relationship. Mm-hmm. When you feel secure with yourself, mm-hmm. you're able to learn to help mm-hmm. the other person 
yeah. of your needs and wants and yeah. the expectations and boundaries. Mm. So when the person croaks, you also will remind the person, I'm not okay with this. I don't like the way you communicate to me. Perhaps mm. you can consider this way. I feel dismissed when you right. ignore my text. But when you become so aware of yourself, you yeah. are not shy. Mm. You're not afraid to tell people what you need yeah. in order for people to understand you. Mm. Because we are all not my readers. I will <laughs> never understand what, you, what you're thinking yeah. and neither do you understand me. So mm. I think we will definitely have a better communication. When you have a healthier boundaries, yeah. better communication, mm. and you wouldn't do this uh, unhealthy coping mechanism, avoiding or stonewalling <laughs> and not talk to you or criticize you mm-hmm. or you taking everything personally. Mm. And I will also learn to be more empathetic. Right. I will have this empathic confrontation mm-hmm. and I will resolve the conflict with you or whoever I'm facing mm-hmm. much more uh, healthily. I will also try to put myself in that person's shoe and understand why the person react or respond to the way that uh, things that we are experiencing. Mm-hmm. So um, definitely learning to set healthy boundary has a lot of benefits. Yeah. But I think again, going back is to learn to do it with yourself. Mm. And of course, doing with others, not only just with your friends, strangers, it can be with your family members as well. And the others. <laughs> this, I think, you know, when you mentioned the avoidance part, oh, that is me. <laughs> And I think I'm also learning how to set healthy boundaries as well. Yeah. I think everyone's just a work in progress. Mm. Like, it's okay if you realize it later. Mm. Sometimes it takes a big event or something, a life mm-hmm. crisis or something in mm. life that make you think about it. You know, you want to change an entirely different mm. thing. So it's just like, don't be too hard on yourself. Mm. Just take one step at a time. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Is there any way that we can improve our self-awareness or self-reflection, anything that we can for my way, mm-hmm. I, I talk to people a lot. Okay. I talk to my friends, mm. people I entrust with, mm. get feedback from them. Mm. Whenever I talk to them, it helps me to process whatever that's in my head. And I, additionally, actually journaling helps a lot. Mm. I did a lot of journaling lately and it helps me to read back a lot of things that how I process my thoughts, mm-hmm. my emotions, my behavior, and my values a lot. Yeah. If you notice that some of the values that you adopt, that may not be healthy for you or some of the coping mechanisms that you adopt in your past may not be working for the current situation, you will learn to unlearn it, Yes, right? You will learn to unlearn it. So a lot of learning and unlearning progress. Yeah. Reading books helps as well. Mm. I've been reading a lot lately. Yeah. Another thing that I actually enjoy, I know it can be a stigma for some people, especially to see a therapist. Even though working as a therapist, we definitely yeah. need to see a therapist sure. as well, just to keep ourselves in check, to avoid our transference and yeah. counter-transference issues. Right. So mm. seeing therapists, it's good. The longest I've done is actually three month class. Mm-hmm. Going it every week while I was looking with the therapist on my own personal mm-hmm. issues. I have also been working every week, spending at least one hour a day mm-hmm. on learning about myself. People who have experiences like a fear of abandonment, mm-hmm. a need to getting approval from yeah. people, recognition seeking or mm-hmm. people pleaser. It's also hard to sit and to spend time with yourself. So as I grow older, uh, I learn to be more detached and to see things more objectively and learn to compartmentalize or categorize Mm -hmm. like how am I feeling it is this a feeling or is it a thought I'll write it down Mm -hmm. and then I'll reevaluate again so working on myself actively consciously Mm -hmm. and also going to therapy helps me a lot talking to friends also help me those are some of the things that I'm working on a lot Mm -hmm. Uh, yoga helps a lot work out it can be Muay Thai or (laughs) or any other activities Mm -hmm. those actually helps you to learn to live in the present moment Mm -hmm. also helps you to feel your body and get yourself in check. Actually, yeah, there's a, a lot of good tips that we can do. Mm. Seeing a therapist, you can even read self-help books, you can do journaling, you can even do activities, physical activities, and um, talking to people. Having a support system <laughs> is very important. We are no one-man island. It's not possible. Even if you are someone who is very strong, mm. you're mentally very resilient, you still need people to be around you. Mm-hmm. Surround yourself with people who actually want you to succeed and help you. Even if you experience like a disagreement with uh, someone who are close to you, don't immediately dismiss them as toxic. (laughs) Or perhaps you can just like, you know, talk to the person like, Mm -hmm. I felt unheard when you did not respond to me about this matter. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if we can talk about it. Just remind the person. Mm -hmm. It's not the person that is toxic. It's potentially the behavior. And potentially the person is also experiencing some Mm -hmm. challenges in life or they are just doing it unconsciously. Mm -hmm. It's okay to just tell them, Elvis. I understand not everyone can confront 
So if you can't confirm, you can always use other way as well. If it's really not, if you're so drained out, I guess uh, you should take a step back and just focus on yourself first. Thank you so much, Jolene. <laughs> and of course, Thank as you. we are reaching the end of our episode, any take-home messages that you would like to leave your audience with? Especially those who are struggling like relationship with themselves and also other people. I understand saying no is hard, especially in this uh, collective society. <laughs> don't expect yourself to be okay all the time. And don't expect yourself to be positive all the time. Sometimes uh, life hit, hit us hard and that's the time that we can see as an opportunity to grow. Mm -hmm. Instead of seeing it as uh, challenges that will stop us from growing. And of course, uh, if you are stuck, you can always unstuck yourself because there is this um, strong side of you in you that will able to lift up the i wouldn't say weak but uh, mm -hmm. the inside you basically there's always a uh, different parts of you and you just need to focus on how you can do it i think learning on how the word how is so important right. not everything stuck stays in why and yeah. what and when you start looking at the how as well mm -hmm. you also help you to move forward and don't feel bad if you're getting to know yourself or building a healthy relationship at the later time or even like mm -hmm. earlier time. That's right. There's no fixed time. Like everyone just has a work in progress. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. I always think that way that yeah. everyone is just like growing, growing. Mm -hmm. and, and it's okay that your life purpose change from time to time too. And whatever goal that everyone else is achieving, mm -hmm. you know, having kids at 30 and or 20 and getting married or successful career at that age mm -hmm. and you are not yet there it's okay mm -hmm. just like how we watched the michelle yo she just won her award in her 60s i just thought it was really inspiring mm -hmm. so never stop growing and mm -hmm. learning and always stay curious be kind to yourself thank you julie for such a powerful message so relevant to all of us here and of course for those who are watching if this episode resonates with you feel free to save this video or you can also share with anyone you know so thank you so much for watching this episode and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs>